Hi, and welcome back to another channel teaching. My name is Rena Wells. I am a medicine woman, highly intuitive. I have all of the clairs and abilities. Uh, I've been on my spiritual journey this entire life incarnation. I uh, knew I was very psychic growing up. Um, and so I've been on my path for a very long time. I've been on my healing journey for about 30 years, and I've healed some of the most uh, traumas uh, that a lot of people have not been able to heal. And so if you are in a dark place and if you are looking to and you're feeling stuck with a lot of the teachings out there, everything that I do is directly channeled from source with catered, customized teachings for you. So if you do feel stuck and you need something completely different, take a look down below. All my services are below and I am offering a reading or a forecast reading. Uh, it's The offer ends January 31st, so all that info is down below. If you are new, welcome, and please make sure you subscribe and hit that like button. For those that are already subscribed, make sure you hit that bell so you're getting notified. All right, guys, we're going to jump right into this. Uh, thank you for your patience. I've gone through myself a very um, potent clearing, um, mainly because I've been um, connected with source energy very strongly, but also in regards to working with some very potent clients and also divine masculines that are out there. And I can tell you the divine masculines are really on the rise. And so much so because as a divine feminine, obviously when um, I work with people, I'm an empath. I'm highly, I'm like next level empath. Um, I feel to the point of telepathy. I can have telepathy with any soul, not just my twin. Um, so there's a lot of gifts that I have. And so when I work with divine masculine energies, it does affect my energy system and uh, yeah, so we're going to go into this a little bit more because the more sensitive we become in our divine feminine energy, the more we are able to house and hold space for a various number amounts of energies to come into our vibration and holding multitudes of energies at one sitting. It almost reminds me of an ayahuasca ceremony. My shaman is able to sit there and hold a container of quite a large energy container for for many different varieties of energies. And so I do that in a different sense uh, with all of you guys and people that work with me. I work with very highly intuitive souls. And so Spirit was really telling me to talk a lot about this because I know we're in huge transition. We're in a huge awakening. What's happening with humanity right now is we're being split and so spirit wants me to bring this up because we are being split we're being split into you know lower consciousness and those that are ready to dive into creator force energies and those that uh, are staying in the lower frequencies the darker frequencies it doesn't mean that they're bad okay <laughs> or it's evil but we must realize that we must have contrast in our evolution process of where we currently are at on the planet spirit is saying we are hoping to get to a point on the planet where we won't need the contrast in such uh, harsh ways okay you know where there's mass killings and you know rape and taken of innocence and power spirit is saying that we are fighting and working and healing as a collective into moving into heaven on earth bridging heaven on earth and this is the potency of why twin flames are here and again other soul connections because i don't want to bring labels to this i know there's a lot of uh triggers with that title so this is why i'm also saying soul connections okay high vibrational soul connections soul connections that are able to access creator force energy and so the split that's happening in humanity are those that are continuously sucking energy from others that require the power struggles they are not ready to elevate into what spirit is saying their fate okay Destiny and fate are two completely different scenarios, although they intertwine with each other. There are links between 
destiny and fate, but we're going to get into that because your twin flame or who God created you with, your clear mirror soul, whatever label you want to put that on, that lies in the container of fate. Okay, your destiny and what I do and when you work with me is I can pull in your blueprint, which is your destiny and the path that you chose for yourself. But I'm also able to see, uh, thank you, Spirit is telling me, I can, I didn't know this that I could do this until now. A Spirit is saying that when I work with your blueprint, I'm able to see your destiny, which is your blueprint, and the choices that you're making, which is your free will choices in the earth plane. And however, Spirit, when you sit with me, especially in a coaching session, Session, uh, Spirit gives me teachings to get you aligned to your fate. Now, getting aligned to your fate is very different than your destiny. Fate is your contract with your Creator, with God Source, okay, with the Divine. And you decided to choose your destiny, things that you wanted to experience before you came into this incarnation. And so part of that destiny is, yes, your twin flame, but your twin flame or the mirror soul, the clear mirror of your soul is also your fate, is also your contract with the divine because God made you with this and with your clear mirror. And so the intersection happens, the Spirit has wanted to bring this through in this teaching this week is because most of us in humanity, in the mass consciousness, are playing and sitting in the vibration of destiny, our free will choices. Now, when we get aligned to fate and our contract that we know is our purest alignment, it's an altruistic alignment, the fate is what we have with God source, and that trumps everything in your blueprint. Now, you may ask, why is it then do I put a blueprint down? Well, there is a lot of things that we are healing in this lifetime. If you've incarnated at this time in this present moment and listening to this, you are a healer. You are a light worker. You are an advanced soul. Every human at this point is an advanced soul. Now, depending on your awakening process and when your unfolding of your fate mission, which is your truest alignment of, with God source, happens, that is when your higher self is completely aligned with your small piece of your consciousness that you brought down in your blueprint in this body, when that happens, that is when you will move into out of destiny and into fate, into full union with your twin, into a healing mission. Until that point, most of humanity is sitting in the place of destiny, where we still have free will. And Spirit wants me to bring this up because this is where we break out of the new age paradigm, okay? When we are sitting in the destiny blueprint of what you wanted to choose, these are all different kinds of relationships that you want to experience. This is uh, where you want to live, uh, different talents that you want to explore, different hobbies, different careers, whatever it is in that free will that you can choose freely and manifest those manifestation capabilities, Spirit is saying, sits in that umbrella in the destiny blueprint that you created for yourself. Now, when a soul evolves beyond your blueprint, that is when you're ready for your fate, okay? And so, yes, you may have met your counterpart, your twin flame, your soulmate, in a precipice time in your destiny blueprint. And now what's happening is in that destiny blueprint, you may have other lessons that you may need to learn that could be other soulmates that you need to be in relationship with that may be other work scenarios that you need to experience that may be actually leaving your career and starting your own business that might be moving house or moving country whatever it is in that destiny it is a free will choice that is thank you spirit is saying a trigger to activate thank you your fate alignment the agreement of fate that you have with god and so spirit is saying every time you make I did not know this either. I love doing these channel teachings because I learned so much. Spirit is saying when you come in into your destined uh blueprint and you're about to make a, a significant life choice with your free will, right? Because in the destiny umbrella you're still having a massive amount of free will. 
Spirit is saying it's not that you don't have that in fate, but we're going to get into that in a minute. Spirit is saying every time you make a choice, there is no right or wrong. And the reason for that, we think it's right or wrong because that fate container is divided in two. And so Spirit is saying that we think in duality. That's how we think and how our mind and how society and how culture and how tradition has formulated the psyche is with right or wrong. We usually go with right or wrong. And we are being formed in our blueprint, in that destiny, in um, learning how to choose between the right and wrong and how to actually move to the middle ground of the brain, to move into the center, to balance our energies of the masculine and feminine with within ourselves. And so when we're living in our destiny blueprint, yes, we may have met our twin flame that may have caused a massive activation. But instead of looking at it in a linear sense, spirit is saying, when you made a choice to meet that lined up that you met your twin, or the mirrored soul, or your soul connection, or you're make about to make a massive decision in your life that could change the uh, outline of your path of what you currently know, spirit says every time your choice is made and this is why your free will and your power of choice is so important is because there is like a little ding spirit says i put a little red flag to see if that actually aligns to your fate and the more dings <laughs> red flag spirit says that signals the fate template your template of agreement with god spirit says that creates momentum, that creates your abundance and your alignment of your higher self of God's source coming into full alignment within your vessel. And this is why a lot of us aren't sure about our destiny or we're not sure about our path. We may have multiple uh, talents. We may be able to morph and fit into multiple places. I know for myself, it was very difficult. You know, I'm good at music. I'm good at dancing. I'm good at writing. I'm good at analytics. I'm good at business. I'm good. <laughs> I have a vast amount of talents. Um, and so spirit is bringing this up because a lot of souls have multiple amounts of talents that are ready that are in this point that are listening to this spirit is saying that are divine masculines and divine feminines you have an array of talents but it's so difficult because you don't know where to put your focus okay spirit saying this is because you're still in the destiny of learning and processing and knowing yourself spirit is saying we have to go through our natural blueprint and different contract meetings with certain people okay spirit is saying certain contract meetings yes aren't as significant as other ones and if you have uh, jumped timelines so to per so to say or you have had massive growth uh, for instance you may not need a certain soulmate that contract will fall away your timelines will not meet up okay but spirit is saying that the more uh, that you are activating your fate your agreement with God source spirit is saying every time you make those choices you will realize okay maybe this person is it for me, you will make that choice, it will feel strong. But then things don't go as planned. And you wonder, wow, did God trick me? Spirit is saying, no, I did not trick you. You put this into your soul contract into your blueprint to be destined for this soulmate to awaken you further. And whenever those choices are made, that red flag ding, ding, ding goes to spirit and says, Oh, wait a minute, that's not your soulmate this is actually your real abundance. Remember, you met your twin four years ago. You may have moved on, but when you uh, say four years, I'm just using as an example, comes up and now you've met this person, you think, okay, this is it. And then it goes array. You may be very frustrated in your path. This is where spirit is asking us to completely surrender our destiny. When we are ready to level up into fate, God is saying all the frustrations that we have in our destiny we believe that what we put in our destined plan is good for us now for some here on the planet it is good enough for them that is all they can handle they may not be able to level up and activate their contract of fate with God when you activate your alignment with God your fate that means that you are completely done with what you believe you wanted to create in this world. And when that happens, 
that means that who you thought you were has completely fallen away. Okay? People and friends and relationships and things that you thought were meant for you will completely fall away. Even your money and your property and things that you believed, you know, that uh, you enjoyed at one time, you may not have an interest for anymore. Your music taste may change. Your food may change. Your health may change. Lots of things change because what happens in the destiny umbrella is aligned to the mental concepts and the cultural and the DNA lineage that you chose to come into. And so those belief systems are very difficult to break. And when we sit in that destiny aspect, some of us are, yes, some humans in, in the mass consciousness and the mass collective will only need to experience that and may be quite happy with a soulmate or a partner and be compromising and working uh, in these destined environments to completely keep their free will choice. Now, Spirit is saying when you're ready to move into your aligned uh, higher self, merging, uh, letting go of completely everything that you've known, this is your fated path. This is your contract with God. Okay. This is where we actually give up free will. Now, I know this is difficult for a lot in the New Age community because these teachings um, weren't ready to come through until now, obviously, because I'm the one that was given the key for this. And so what is coming down with fate? A lot of people in the New Age community, I'm going to tell you, do not want to believe that they have free, that their free, their free will uh, is actually an illusion. So please keep this with an open mind. When you are ready to fully come into pure alignment of memory of your soul and full alignment with mission, these are the new leaders of the new earth. Okay. The new leaders of the new earth must surrender everything that they thought that was destined for them. That means a complete surrendering has happened. That if you look at yourself from even in the last year, you're on the fast route of ascension, right? And uh, things are happening very quickly and you may feel that things are slipping out of your control. And when that happens, that is a pure humbling. Humility starts to happen. You start to let go of your desires. And this is where it becomes very difficult because this is when all those red flags all those little red flags, or I should say those little uh, flags that when you made choices in your destined path, spirit was like, ah, yes, we're gaining momentum with the fate. We're gaining momentum here. Now you are ready to come into full alignment with God. And when you're ready to come into alignment with God, you will feel almost like you are pushed you are almost in a corner that you have no other choices. Your free will is basically taken from you because you may be left with an option to, we're talking about soulmate relationships, so let's let's talk about that. You may have an option to be with a very high-end level soulmate. You know, before you meet or before you come into union, you would have already met at this point your divine counterpart okay your mirror soul at this point when you're moving into the fate template your full alignment with god your contract with god okay this means you're surrendering everything spirit says when you've hit this point you will have a choice you will have be presented with a high level soulmate now this is where it gets a little complicated because high level soulmates can feel very much like a twin flame connection However, there'll be one slight difference. Um, one slight difference is a grounding aspect, something that would not necessarily manifest in the way that you know fits and feels right for you. And that is something that you know, like you know with such a deep authenticity that you are meant for that. Now, for instance, I will give you my example is I have met 
soulmates and people that I have a strong connection with, that I believe that I could be with this with this person or build a life with this person or even date and see how this goes. The one thing that keeps me grounded is the family life and the children. Because I came from such trauma, I did not have a happy childhood. <laughs> um, I had a great material childhood. I did not have an emotionally fulfilling childhood. Uh, I had a lot of trauma in my life, and not just from my immediate family, from aunts and uncles as well, uh, and being teased and bullied my entire life, even from siblings, okay? And I have a narcissistic sibling. And so because of that, um, because of that trauma, that has happened in my life. I have two children that, yes, certain patterns have repeated because, for instance, I have zero support. I have had to raise them, cook for them, feed them. They're two years apart. Work, make money, build a home. I have done the job of an entire community because I don't even have immediate family that would take them. Okay. So, I know, and you, your path will be different, but I'm using this as an example, so you will see. I don't even have close family that would take them. I mean, my parents, yes, <laughs> but they don't even uh, reside in this country <laughs> full time, so I'm pretty much on my own. Um, and so what's happened is that I've known that I want that family union uh, and that unit, and I want to be able to be in my divine feminine to nurture and care fully in that giving. I have so much to give, but that gets stifled because I have to then step into a masculine role to build my business, to feed my children, right? So Spirit is saying, there will be something also in your path that you know is for you. And so I say this because I know I've met soulmates who do not have children who have not experienced this type of life, you know, being with children. And it has been a struggle for me because uh, they wouldn't really truly understand, especially having two children close together. I've been with people who have had children and, uh, you know, 10 years apart. They still don't understand because if I had, if I was able to have two kids 10 years apart, I probably wouldn't be <laughs> as stressed as I am. But these are the examples I'm bringing up because I know my mirrored soul and my twin, our children line up. Our children are all two years apart, sequential right? Family is important. This is the basis of knowing when you are ready to surrender, even if you could be very happy with the soulmate. Now, when I say this, when you're moving into the faded aspect, okay, well, you know that you have completely surrendered. This is the transition piece many of you are sitting with right now. So I'm going to help you with this right now. You've met a high level soulmate. You and you've met your twin and you've met your mirror and you're stuck. Okay. Spirit, this is the point of mastery where spirit wants you to come into a place of being able to love your high end soulmate or to even seek one if you so, so desire and to be open and authentic and even express your twin flame connection and everything that you've experienced with your mirror soul with that individual, but also being able to be comfortable with everything and knowing that it could still be reciprocated. Now, that is still to hold a beautiful container of divine love because you are only loving everybody in your life. It doesn't mean that you have to not love your twin. The twin flame love in the mirror soul is a very different uh, vibration. Okay, it's a holy, sacred mission. Okay, um, but if that is not a possibility and you have surrendered that to God and a high level soulmate shows up, spirit also doesn't want you to just say no because you're waiting. This is also to surrender that aspect that you're actually waiting for something with your mirror soul. 
Okay, God wants to know that you can completely surrender and still be happy with someone else. And so the trick here, which is a hard one, because this is where it takes healing. Okay, this is not a mind thing. I don't care what teachings are out there. This is not a mind thing. This is healing the emotional world, the attachment of the emotions. Okay, and when we do that, it's healing inner child work and honoring the intuition piece and the gut knowing piece. You need to do all of this work to be able to come into a place of alchemy. And when you come into a place of alchemy, that means you are completely open to receiving. You are not getting caught up in stories of the mind that trigger emotional stories that put you in a disarray. Okay, you are usually at this point doing a daily spiritual practice. You at this point are usually figuring out your talents and real getting messages of how maybe you will be serving. Okay. You at this point will be realizing, I love this soulmate. There is a beautiful connection here. And this connection allows me to love my twin. There's no attachment here. Both of us feel free. Both of us feel wonderful. And still being able to receive that love of a, from a high level soulmate and still being able to love your twin at the exact same time. Now, you may say this person does not exist. I can assure you this person does exist for you. Okay. Now, when you're able to do that, now a soulmate may not come for you. That may be in, in the aspect of loving yourself in that way. And even if a high level soulmate does come, it is still about loving yourself in that way. Because when you come into the place of grounding the alchemy, it's in a place of mastery of loving multiple in a grandiose way without any stipulation. And, I, and that's a hard one because that means if we are still attached, if we are trauma bonding, okay, trauma bonding is believing that you need to hold space for someone else because uh, holding space for, we're going to get into that, holding space for somebody is an old, uh, it's a new age kind of thing. <laughs> Um, when you're coming up into your fate and aligned with God, um, you're coming into a place of mastering your emotions so much that you know your boundary in the amount of space that you need to hold may, thank you, is a very short stint in compared to what you are holding for another person. So let's go into that a little bit. Spirit is saying that when you hold space for uh you're still in the destiny and you're still having free will and you're still going through multiple uh, choices, okay? Spirit is saying that at that point, um, you will have to hold space for your partner for long periods of time, okay? For them to work things out because it's, it's uh, I think you, Spirit is saying, it's, it's a broken mirror aspect, we are working towards our fate, which is our twins in coming into union with our clear mirror, not a broken mirror. Okay. And so patience, you'll notice that in these types of connections, there's patience, there's trying to fix the other person, there's holding on a, so much amount of space for somebody, for them to grow. That is still all destiny based, trying to sort your stuff out. Now, when you're moving into your fate, you're holding space. Thank you. Spirit says it goes from holding space from like weeks on end to, yeah, Spirit's like saying 20 minutes max. Okay. Max. They're even saying maybe even 10 minutes. Okay. You speak with your person, uh, your friends, your whoever you have a connection with. You hold space for like 10 minutes. And that's it because that person can hold space for themselves. For you see, Spirit is saying, when you come into your fate, when you come into your contract with God, that means you will have other connections who are in connection with their fate template, who are working on their contract with God. That means your free will kind of just goes out the window. Not to say that you can't choose being with a high level, level soulmate or being on your own. Spirit, it says you still have those choices. However, however, you will be highly discerned when you're making those choices. It's not like when you were in the destiny container 
and you're saying, oh yeah, okay, let's date this person, or I want to date now, let's go to a dating app, and let's just date the, let's, I need more experience, or I need, that's in the destiny container, okay, when we move into the fate, aligned with God, and our real mission, that's here on the planet, okay, you will meet other souls, that are at the same place, and when you meet a high level soulmate at this place, they will be just as discerned as you, they will move just as slow as you. They will look at every aspect of energy to ensure that they are honoring their alignment and their truth. You come into contact with other whole, close to whole beings. Okay? You don't have to hold space for a whole being. They know how to do that with God. Because when you move into your fate with God, you are moving into in a different stage of consciousness, a different frequency of consciousness, an expansive consciousness with other souls who know how, know how to heal, love, and nurture themselves, that they are not in a power struggle, okay? Whereas in the destiny realm where you're working on your blueprint, you're still sifting and sorting through all of these different variations and freely using your free will, you may not even be as focused as what you're doing with your free will. Okay, that's fine. That's where you're at. Spirit is saying that you will. Right. The pain that you experience in that dimension. You will soon recognize. The amount of pain and suffering that you don't want that anymore. That's when you come work with me. <laughs> that's when you really realize you want your fate. Okay. And um, that's when you realize that is something um, that you don't want to play anymore in the destiny realm and that you are realizing how powerful your power of choice really is, okay? That you're going to choose very carefully when you come into your alignment with God. And when you come into your alignment with God and that those faded connections, you already have a level of discernment of energies because you have been betrayed and broken and hurt and suffering. And that is the realm of our destiny template is so that we know that we must surrender that piece of our consciousness aside so the full source of creator can come in and move the mountains through us. We now become in our faded contract with God. Thank you, God is saying, Spirit is saying, our main contract with God is to be the full expression. Now, when we move into contract with God, that is the energy of pure, creative, creator force, okay? That means you are becoming a creator. You are becoming a manifester. You are realizing that you have gifts and talents. You may figure out, oh my God, I can sing. Oh my gosh, I'm actually an artist. Or you may pick up, uh, you know, pottery and be like, wow, I'm really good at this. I wanted to do this since I was a kid. Uh, I was pulled to, I didn't even know. All of the things that you want to do as a child, all of these little dreams that you had as a child, they start to surface, okay? And so you may be wondering, well, how do I move into my faded connection here? How do I gain access to all of these talents? Well, none of us can just jump into our faded connections. There are pieces and tricks and resonance and um, different things that you can do in the destined path. Okay, so A lot of people that I work with are in that transitionary period that are moving into learning more about uh, destiny and fate and how to get more aligned into their into their mission. Now that takes a great amount of healing, okay? Because when we're ready to move into a contract with, with fate, with God, that means that we have massive amounts of healing to get back into that inner child, back to the purity of your soul when you first came here, okay? Now, what does a newborn baby look like? Spirit's bringing this up. A newborn baby just kind of lays there and just observes everything. You got to do everything for that child, right? Now that they're so pure because their consciousness is able to sit back and absorb and take in and just observe everything. And so Spirit is saying, we are moving back to that state of consciousness, but with the rational mind of discernment, okay, of understanding the power of choice is one. Okay, um, how to, thank you, Spirit is saying, um, 
the purity of our vibration is another and how we honor and love ourselves to the depth so deeply is the much as how we love God is how we love everybody else. But yet we also have the discernment and the, and the understanding that we must keep that vibration pure. And so we only have long term contracts and, and um, relationships with those that are also in that same frequency of moving in with God with their alignment with God. Okay, that means that we can no longer be in the destined path. And when you're in that transitionary piece, it is very difficult because you will sway back and forth. Now there are all of these little red flags that when you make a choice in the destined container, it's if it's tied to your faded path, like your twin flame, for instance, or if for instance, for myself was music, which, you know, I didn't know. Um, but at one point, music was, I, I have spirits telling me to tell you when I was, you know, two, three years old, my mom said I'd always have the stupid Sesame Street headset and the cassette playing over and over again and singing to like Cookie Monster, you know. Um, I would have never known that music was my path, but spirit brought that back to me because that was something from my childhood. And so you will not be able to know those things this is not a logical thing. This is healing the attachment of the physical stimulus of the destiny container and healing that so you can peel back that attachment so that you can let that go and surrender any form of attachment of the emotional realm to then fully come into a better understanding of that purity that's laying just underneath and spirit is saying, that is when the emergence of your full gifts start to come up. Now, moving into that alignment is not an easy process. This is why I'm here for you, okay, guys? Because in order to come into full um, your path, your destiny, it takes time, it takes work, it takes dedication, it takes routine, okay? Um, and I'm just going to be honest, even me, highly intuitive, I still need to have time alone without my children which is very difficult right now with COVID but alone to ground be with God be with spirit pull in the energies that I need and you know I've realized the more that I'm coming more of my fated connection I need a good two hours and this is why I don't start my business until 10 o'clock you guys I need two to three hours in the morning just to serve you guys okay just to be able to give to my children give to the home give to my business and even that is overwhelming. So spirit is saying that these routines and these things start to come up in your destined path, okay? When you are learning how to meditate. So all of these things are very important. You're picking up a lot of tools. And if it's going to be part of your faded path with God, your contract with God and your mission of why you're here as a soul, those things will line up and be reinforced as you move through those transitionary energies. Okay. Now, Spirit wanted to put this out because Spirit doesn't want you to suffer. No matter where you are in your path, if you're still in the destined area and you're still trying to figure things out, if you're in a transitionary period and, you know, you're getting pulled between, you know, your twin and a soulmate and who's good for you, who isn't good for you, or even if you're fully, you know, coming into alignment with mission, and you're still not entirely sure of, you know, where you're going fully and it can be a little frustrating, no matter where you're at. Thank you. Spirit is saying there is always a pause. There's always a space that you can bring God into that. And the more that you can surrender and create the space for God, create the space for you to create a solid foundation and relationship with spirit first you yourself and I and God that's it okay and to ground that with mother earth no matter where you are at that will allow things to shift and enhance your faith in the universe okay all right I'm going to leave it at that. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you do want to work with me, if you would have any questions about your path in regards to how you can heal, because I'm not going to answer questions. Um, I don't read over the over internet, you guys. Um, but if you do have questions in regards to, you know, I, I want to work with you. I don't know how I need to heal. I don't know what's the next step. 
hit me up because I do, I am working on ayahuasca ceremonies with my shaman. Uh, we run retreats. If you want to work on coaching with me, if you would like a reading, that offer ends on January 31st. Make sure that you book by January 31st. All that info is down below. If you are new and welcome, if you are a returning subscriber, hit the bell. You know the drill. Comment down below. Would love to hear what you guys think about this. And um, I learn along as I'm channeling. So this has been very informative too. And I'm sending you guys so much love. Take care, you guys. Bye.